Well, guys, today I will talk about the kinetic chain. We all know that for tennis strokes, whether it's forehand or backhand or volley or you know serve, there's a kinetic chain. Basically, we want to first use our big muscle and then um, small muscle and then uh, accelerate the racket, right? So, but have you ever um, feel frustrated when you try to get the feeling of that kinetic chain and it's not, it not working so well? Um, or have you ever uh, tried very hard, put a lot of energy into a shot, but the shot doesn't um, seem as powerful as you like? Um, so today I will use a forehand as, as an example and uh, explain um, a little bit about the kinetic chain, how it should be fired, and, and there's a key reason uh, why uh, sometimes the kinetic chain will break. And then I will give you a simple drill that will uh, give you instant feeling of the kinetic chain. So for forehand, roughly speaking, Speaking, there are three stages. The first stage after loading, right? You put the weight on your on your um, right leg, and uh, you your upper body is coiled, right? Um, the first step is push uh, your leg and rotate your hip. Right? The second stage is your chest and shoulder pulling forward, right? And the third stage is when you do this um, windshield wiper, you fire your, your wrist. Right? So roughly speaking, there are those three stages. Right? We know that the power should come from ground up, right? So you should push hard with the leg, then the energy transfer to your hip, then to your chest, to your shoulder, to your arm, and then eventually to your wrist and the racket. So a key um, observation is that you have to stop the previous part in the kinetic chain before you're going to the next part of your kinetic chain. Okay? Um, let's take the uh, hip as an example. Right? In the first stage, so after you fire the hip, roughly here, you should stop the hip somehow so that the energy can transfer to your chest and shoulder for the, sh for the uh, shoulder adduction. Right? If you don't do that, if you um, keep rotating your hip, uh, we call it uh, hip over rotation. Right? So it looks like something like this, right? Or all the way rotate. That doesn't work so well, okay? Because your body will move at about the same speed as your shoulder, as your uh, uh, arm, like this, okay? Same speed. Okay? There's no acceleration and no transfer of energy, right? Think about a car that's running really fast, and if a passenger doesn't uh, uh, have his um, seat belt buckled, and if the car suddenly stop, then the passenger will accelerate, right? Because of the inertia. The same thing for the uh, 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 kinetic chain here. So basically, to transfer the energy generated by the big muscle to the smaller muscle, you want to stop the big muscle so the more muscle can accelerate. Okay. Same thing for the um, for the arm and wrist part. Okay. Let's forget about the hip for a moment. So after you fire the hip, okay. So there's about this distance. Okay. So you need to travel your shoulder and arm to roughly this position, and then you fire your wrist. Right. If you don't stop your arm at this point, right? I saw many amateur players do something like this, right? So basically, 
you can see the problem here. The racket head is very slow, right? You may use a lot of force, but the racket head is at the same speed as your arm, right? So there's no acceleration. So the correct way of firing the kinetic chain is like a, a, a whip, right? So basically, after you travel from here to here, you should stop your arm and shoulder, make them quiet, and then the energy will transfer to your racket. Because after all, it's the racket that hits the ball. So ideally, all the energy should transfer into the racket head speed, racket head speed. So you want to stop here, stop here, and make the racket fly. To get the feeling of this uh, kinetic chain, I have a very simple drill. Okay. The drill basically is to isolate uh, your wrist from the other motions. So you want to focus on accelerating your wrist. Okay. Um, you can start by doing some shadow swings right, without a ball. Right. So your goal is to make sure you make the sound of the racket, the swoosh sound of the racket, okay, as high as possible, right? So still, you still need to load up your leg, you need to uh, push really hard, and then like that, and then try to really focus on this acceleration right here, okay? Try to really accelerate uh, your racket at the contact point. And then you can just uh, uh, get some ball and do some drills. You could hit you know, off a wall or you, you uh, 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 hit with a ball machine or if you have a partner, the partner can pass the ball to you or you can self-feed, right? So I would recommend two things. One is that do not let the ball drop. So basically you hit the ball in the air, right? So you toss the ball, don't let the ball drop and hit it in the air. The reason is that if the ball bounces, then it will come to a um, zero speed. And then the ball is you know, very, very slow. That way you can really push the ball, right? But when the ball doesn't uh, uh, drop before it bounces, it has some speed. So you have to really accelerate, okay? You have to really accelerate your wrist. And second is that I would recommend using an open stance. Basically, it means you just load your right leg and push your hip off the ground. Okay, push your hip off the ground. Okay. So basically, um, it will make sure that you do not um, turn into this um, over rotation, right? Because if you uh, do a, a, a semi-open or neutral stance, normally you would tend to uh, push the ball a bit. Right? So just use the open stance and just hit the ball in the air, okay, before it bounces. Right? And you can do this like, you know, 100 times a day, and I guarantee you, you will feel uh, the kinetic chain so much better. Right? Uh, if you can get the beginning, uh, which is the loading, correct, you know, put the weight on your right leg, you know, coil your body, your upper body should turn more than your hip, right? And then if you get the end of this uh, kinetic chain correct, which is the racket speed, right? When you hit the ball. Okay? If you get the beginning and the ending correct, uh, a lot of times your body will unwind naturally, okay? Your body will automatically find the feeling of kinetic chain. Okay? So you will get about 80% of the kinetic chain correct. Then you can work on the, some details about the kinetic chain, like uh, the, the heel, the knee, uh, the hip, the shoulder, etc. Right? <laughs> One more, one more. 
So to sum up, the take home message is, what's most important is not how much energy you generate, but is how much energy you can actually transfer into your racket, especially your racket head speed, right? So you could be swimming really, really hard, like pushing, really pushing hard off the ground, but if your wrist, okay, is slow right here, right? If you hit like this, your ball will still be slow, right? So you have to transfer that energy into your racket head speed. And to do that, you must um, make the previous part silent when you fire up the next part in your kinetic chain.